Okay, have you ever been in a situation where you have an insane clutch and your team is screaming in the microphone in disbelief? But then you realize that you forgot to press the record button at the start of the game. Yeah, I know. Me too. So in this video, I'm gonna save you a bunch of time and I'll be showing you one of the easiest and most efficient ways to save your highlights in a way that you don't even have to press any record buttons and you can just focus 100% on making those highlights. You can focus on your game and, and on top of that, you won't lose any FPS either. Yo, Mr. Toimo, my name is Rayo and today I'm gonna show you how to record your gaming highlights with NVIDIA Shadowplay. Obviously, you need to have an NVIDIA graphics card for this to work. So what is NVIDIA Shadowplay? Well, it used to be called Shadowplay, but nowadays it's just called NVIDIA GeForce Experience Instant Replay. But what Shadowplay does, uh, just like the name suggests, it records your gameplay in the shadows, in the background, so you don't even notice it. It records everything you do, but it doesn't save anything until you choose to save. And it's just there all the time, ready for you. So it silently just records everything you do, even your desktop, but it doesn't save anything until you choose to save it. So you're not wasting any space, and every time you do want to save something, all you gotta do is just hit a button on your keyboard. It's hands down one of my favorite ways to record my gameplays, because every time I hop into a match, I don't want to think about recording everything because every time I record it would give me a huge file size. For one hour it would be about 30 gigabytes, maybe 20. I'm not sure but it's unnecessarily large. When I know that I don't get anything good out of that match then I have to go and find that video file and I have to delete it and yada yada yada. It's, it's hard work. <laughs> I want my stuff to be real simple, so whenever I press that button on the keyboard, I know that it saves and that's it, that's done, everything. That way I can just focus on my gameplay, I can focus on bringing those highlights, and I don't have to think about any recording software. If this sounds good for you, then let me jump into my computer and let's get started. As you saw in my last video, I kinda adapted a transition that only cool people on YouTube can do, so let me try this again. Nah, it didn't work this time. It worked! Nice! Alright, so here we are. Let's bring up our desktop and let's launch our NVIDIA GeForce Experience. So this is what it looks like when you first launch it. Let's head on to the settings first and let's make sure that in-game overlay here is turned on. This is what it looks like when it's turned off and this is what it looks like when it's turned on. We need this to be able to do the things we want to do. <laughs> now let's head over to share or we can do the same by pressing Alt plus Z on our keyboard. That brings up this menu here. So here we have our instant replay which we're going to be using for our quick highlights. Here we also have an option to record longer sessions like the whole gameplay but for this I would really recommend you use OBS instead which is a whole another video so if you want to see that make sure you subscribe with the notification bell on because there is gonna be a video about it. So we're gonna now go to the settings of instant replay first make sure it's turned off if you, if you have it turned on, you can't access settings. And here we have the settings. We're gonna go all by all of these one by one. Uh, first we have instant replay length. And what this does is if you have it set to two minutes like I have, then whenever you press your shortcut key, it saves your latest two minutes of your gameplay or desktop. I would suggest to you use around two minutes for games like CSGO, Siege or Valorant, where it's kind of round based. So you can save the whole round if you have anything clip -worthy. But if you play Battle Royale games that take much longer time, then you can set it up to 20 minutes, I guess. So whenever you have a really good game you can simply save the whole game. As of quality I would just suggest you use high. That sets us at 50 megabits per second bitrate which is perfect for us. You can set it to higher up to 70 megabits per second if that's something you want but as you can see the file size is gonna go larger and larger so I'm gonna keep it a little bit lower and I'm gonna keep it at 50. Going lower than 50 I would not recommend if you have a good PC but if you must then sure you can go to medium if you want. Obviously we have our frame rate here and this should be set to 60 fps at all times unless your PC is really bad. Then of course set it to 30 fps, nothing wrong with that, but 60 fps is just gonna get that really crispy smooth gameplay you want. As for resolution, I would leave it to in-game whenever you're playing with your native resolution. 
If you are playing, for example, CSGO with lower resolutions, which, which is a really popular thing to do, then feel free to try out different things here. But even in that case, I would set it to 1080p. But for now, I'm gonna leave it for in-game. And let's click save and let's head on to the microphone settings. I leave my microphone always on, because why not? And I also have two separate tracks. You can, you can either create a single audio track or you can create two of them, which is of course one is going to be your microphone, the other is going to be your system sounds here. Separating them is a really good idea because when you want to cut out some background noise in your microphone, maybe your dog is barking or something, then you can easily do that and you don't have to mute the whole audio, which is really good. All right, let's click save again. And we do have a webcam option here as well, but I would just leave it off because but as you can see, when I turn it on, then it's gonna do a bunch of weird things. Uh, I'd rather leave it off because it just puts your webcam screen without any customization options in the corner. Well, you can choose which corner you want it to be at and there's three different size options. So at least there's some sort of customization, but that's about it. Uh, all in all, it's not a very good option. And if you want to record stuff, including your webcam, just just use OBS, please. So if you want me to make a tutorial on OBS, then please hit that like button. This also helps out the YouTube algorithm so more people who want to learn how to record their gameplay can see this video. All right, so now we need to choose where does GeForce Experience save our videos. And for this, let's head on to the settings, recordings, and here you can see under the videos is the file destination. You should make a specific folder for all your recordings, preferably on an HDD with lots of space like I have done here. And what's really awesome about this is that it will detect the games you are playing and it will make a separate folder for each of these games in your destination folder. So I think that's pretty neat. And when we want to change our keyboard short shortcuts, we're gonna come here and we have two things we need to keep an eye on. One is open close in game overlay, which is alt plus z and the other is under record is save the last x minutes recorded i have it binded to f10 because i'm simply too dumb to remember the combinations so i just prefer to have it on one key anyways let's go back to where we started at and let's turn on our instant replay and as you can see it is now turned on. I do have one more really great tip for you, which saves you a lot of time when you're creating your videos. Also, now you know how to record your clips, but you also need to know how to edit those clips in a way that grabs people's attention and turns them into your followers, your viewers, your fans. So make sure you check out this video here. All right, one great tip, if you need to have multiple short clips for your videos, if you've been with me for a longer time, you know that I used to make TSCO utility tutorials and I had to make a lot of smaller clips and to avoid recording one really big and messy video where I have many mess ups or just random clutter that I know that I need to spend a lot of time to cut out later in the software, then I just set my instant replay to 30 seconds. So when I played out one smoke tutorial, for example, I just pressed F10 and I got it done. And that way I could do a lot of smaller clips really fast without any clutter. And then it was really easy to just drag them onto my timeline in the software and have them ready. And in general, it just saved me a lot of headache. This tip should save you a lot of time cutting out useless parts of your video. So if you enjoyed this video so far, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to learn more about creating content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. GG.